ago I realized that my self savings account was going to be paid off and mature right around the time that I go to smoke free weekend this April 16th through the 20th and I was like this is lit so you guys may have heard of self it used to be called self lender but now they just call themselves self and for a monthly fee, it starts out around 25 bucks a month. You can choose a preset amount that you would like to save and you can choose how long it takes for you to pay this amount off. And the whole time you are paying into it, it's also building your credit. When I tell you guys, I've been getting these alerts like, oh, you have a change to your credit. Oh, you have a change to your credit. And it's not anything bad. It's like my credit score is really going up. And then on top of that, I'm about to have some money to throw in the casino. Listen, I need for you guys to go ahead and check self out. The link is in the show notes. And if you have any questions, just hit me up. All right, then. Peace. Hey, it's your girl Autumn, and I welcome you back to the Lit Life Podcast, where I encourage you to live your life autonomously. So, hey guys, um, it's been um, about a month or a little bit over a month since I've had a solo episode, so I figured, why not? Um, First, I just want to thank you guys for listening. Uh, I want to thank you guys for all of the commentary that you uh, give me on Twitter and, um, you know, just just all of the interactions and just know, letting me know that you are listening to the podcast. Um, also, those of you that are participating in the February 4x4 challenge, which is um, actually coming to an end. Uh, today's recording is being recorded on uh, February 26th. So we have three more days before the actual challenge is over. And I am at, uh, I think I have two left. I have two workouts left. So, um, and I, I've gotten so much positive feedback about all of that. Uh, people asking me, am I going to have a challenge in the uh, month of March? And I hadn't planned on it, but I think I just might. Um, it might not start like the first week in March, but maybe the second week in March. So um, that'll give me a little bit of time to put some things together. So thanks again on that, guys. Um, I, I appreciate you guys keep me going. Um, uh, speaking of that, my last this y'all y'all already know it's it's a solo episode is gonna be random um my last workout which was yesterday uh I, I set out to run because it was 66 degrees outside and I was like you know what just this you know we we got to start training anyway we got to start running anyway so let's just go ahead out and do it I was like I'll do two miles ended up with six miles like, I mean, not six, five, five miles. Like I could have done six, but I had to pee. So, <laughs> and that's like legit what is what happened. I was like, oh, okay. When I got to like mile four, um, I knew that there was a, a another route that I could run instead of going straight back to my house. So um, I was like, oh yeah, this is, you know, a couple more miles that, you know, that'll get me over that didn't give me you know six miles or whatever but I got like half a mile in and I was like all right I 
I ain't gonna be able to hold it no more. So like somebody's child, I had to go home and potty. But anyway, it was a uh, a very good run. Um, of course, first half a mile, last half a mile killed me as normal. Um, typically, my first mile is uphill. Um, I guess just kind of because of uh, how my my neighborhood kind of sits kind of low. So I'm, I have to go uphill to get anywhere. So it always kills me, but, um, it was, it was, it was lit. It was a, a good run. It made me feel good. It made me reassure myself. It gave me, um, um, eight, eight, about 80 minutes of, of pure meditation. And, um, it, it was everything. And, and I, I was very proud of myself. So, um, yeah, that's that on that. Um, I have, I have shut the fuck up award, but I think I'm gonna save it. Um, I, I'm 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 gonna save it because I I'm actually tonight supposed to be recording with uh Paco for our monthly um episode, and uh, I'm gonna just save it unless another one comes to me, then I'll I'll throw it in. But anyways, uh, so. I guess I think I I want to talk to you. I think I want to have a pretty transparent conversation about myself and dealing with anxiety. And so like literally my chest is on fire right now just for uh, just for like saying that I wanted to talk about this so it's 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 so weird it's it's like having anxiety just having a form of an anxiety disorder is it's one of those things that it's very 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 hard to explain to people who have never experienced it. So it's kind of like the explanation is kind of pointless, right? Because if they've never felt this, I mean, it's literally one of those things that if you've never felt it, you'll, you'll never understand it. Like, um, how they say about, um, 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 what, uh, what they call them when you're, when you're pregnant, um, contractions, just like contractions, they say if you've never had a child, you know, you'll never know how that pain hits. And, you know, it's it really is a different type of pain. Like, <laughs> again, it's one of those ones that you can't really explain. So people who have never felt it won't understand, even though even the women that have felt it and they you know, they they can take th- that type of pain and they took it, you know, a lot better than a lot of us did. But they'll still tell you that that pain is undescribable. You know what I'm saying? They say, yeah, I mean, I, I thugged it out, but it really was like crazy. You know, they will tell you that. So it's, it's kind of like that. Um, everybody in life is is anxious at some point in time, right? So um like say for instance before a job interview or before meeting a blind date or uh before a performance or before um having to turn in your um your homework at 11:59 and it's 11:49 and you know you got like four more pages to write you know what I'm saying like we've all been in situations and positions where we have been anxious you know we just have everybody has experienced it uh but for those of us who suffer from some sort of anxiety disorder it's it's kind of like that but it's it's like on um like a cocktail of like 
I don't know. It's it's like timed a hundred. So the 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 little bit of of sweat that you may have had on your forehead, you know, we're we're getting ten times that. You, you know what I'm saying? It's like, and it doesn't, and it seems like it's never gonna pass. <laughs> it seems like it's never gonna pass. So let me try to back up a little bit. Um. Early on in my 20s, very early 20s, uh, I was diagnosed with de- with uh, depression. They weren't really saying anything about anxiety, uh, and I don't remember b- being anxiety. Like, I-, I honestly can't remember when I actually got the diagnosis of anxiety, like when they actually prescribed me anxiety medicine like I can't remember I, I I don't know maybe um maybe 2007 something like that like I don't even remember but uh but yeah so I okay I remember I think I remember when it was it was like 2006 I was in Philadelphia And, um, I was so stressed out. Like this was during, okay, this great, great time for this story. This was during a time when I started gaining weight. So I had gained like 50 something pounds, um, from emotional eating and and having anxiety and not knowing I had anxiety and and all of that and so the way that I found out that I suffer from anxiety was because I had broken out in hives okay I I didn't know what it was I didn't know I, I all I knew was my skin was burning and itching in one like on one part of my arm and then it's it stopped burning and itching there and it went to another part of my arm so it's like I'm scratching but there's nothing there because it has moved and so it was so bad like it was all over my face um I'm literally just I don't know if you've ever seen anybody that that has broken out in hives, especially broken out in hives for the first time. Like they literally crawl. It's disgusting. Um, But I was so scared. And um, uh, my partner took me to the um, to the um, emergency room and they were like, they just started asking like, okay, do you have any allergies, um, you know, that you know of? Are you allergic to any med- medications? Have you eaten anything differently? Um, are you using a different detergent, any different types of body soaps or lotions? And the answer was no to everything. So they could not figure out why I was breaking out in hives. Um, so, but what they prescribed me was uh Benadryl of of course but you know okay Benadryl and and um oatmeal baths like the uh, Aveeno oatmeal baths or whatever but it's like I had to sit in a tub like the first few days like I literally lived in the bathtub it was the only thing that that would um soothe them like I couldn't go to work guys it was so bad it was so bad and so like it went on pretty strong for often off and on for like a month and and they told me at the emergency room they're like okay we can't tell you when this is going to clear up they're like if especially if it's the first time so if it's the first time you've ever had them it's it's gonna kind of like be up and down up and down until it fades out but you know we we can't tell you how long that's gonna take if for real it ever really happens so with me it took probably um about that full six weeks maybe even eight weeks until I realized that I just wasn't getting them anymore and during that time um 
my partner and I were getting ready to break up or may have already broke up or something like that. And um, I had decided to see a therapist. And the, the therapist said it, you know, she <laughs> It, it it was like so obvious to her like I'm you know I'm telling her everything that's going on and um just all the things that's going on at work and with my son and then just you know me being embarrassed about all this and just not knowing what's gonna happen next and all this and then I was like yeah, and then I don't know so something had happened and and the event what happened after that event was the hives so she's like oh wait a minute hives <laughs> and I'm like yeah so anyway I believe that that is when I was actually diagnosed with anxiety so for me there are things that just trigger it like and and once it's for, for me and I, I can really I can only speak for me and I did pull up some articles y'all like I pulled up some articles I give y'all some facts and all this and the other but uh, and, and I just still might do that but I kind of just want to talk about me and how I deal with um how I deal with these things when it when they happen uh, uh because maybe somebody can kind of relate instead of me saying oh these are the signs and symptoms of anxiety disorders because sometimes those things are pretty cut and dry when it could be a mixture of those things or it could be um, those things and something else or or anything but I, I think you guys get my drift so um but yeah so that's when I was diagnosed and what I what I noticed of as far as the hives are concerned that it, it was a lot of times it was that was the extreme so that that me breaking out in hives mean means that I am at my max like uh, that I completely I need a timeout um I you know it's I'm like knocking on meltdown like there's something extreme going on if I if you ever see me tweet or hear me say that I, I'm breaking out in hives, there's something extreme going on. But I, I think that that's like my, the highest thing. Like I haven't, I think I've had a, a panic attack twice in my life and it's been years since any of that has happened. So I, I would say that that would be higher than the highs because you just can't really control yourself. Um, when you're having a well I can I couldn't I couldn't control myself um or control my breathing when I'm having a um panic attack so but it's been years since that's happened thank God um <clears throat> because I've kind of learned how to manage to to manage this thing every day and and you know because every day there there is a there is a probability that something here comes PJ that something can trigger the anxiety right so um but I but anyways I um something something small can happen and here, here's an, another like way to to look at it I know I'm like scatterbrained right now but y'all just just work with me so another way another form or way that anxiety pops up for me is in the form of something small happening and I make it like <laughs> the worst thing ever so um um I scrape my finger and it's like, oh, man, I scraped my finger. Like, literally, you may see a little brush of, of blood on my finger. And then the 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 anxiety side of me is like, bitch, you're going to have to get your finger amputated. Like, <laughs> and I'm laughing, but it's serious. But I'm serious. Like, I would literally think. And even if I think something like that, like something extra extreme, you know, I'll laugh it off just like I did. But it's just the simple fact that it even popped in my mind. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like it's it oh my god guys I, I wish there was a better way that I could explain um how 
my anxiety works. It's I have trouble concentrating like right now I'm in a down down period at work. So I, I'm like in between projects. So I kind of have tons of time and there's no real reason why I shouldn't have a whole lot of extra shit done. Like I should have like 10 podcast episodes recorded. Um, I should have, I mean, there's just so many things like blog posts, all these things. There's so many things that I could have been researching, um, um, other positions I could have been applying for just so many things, but I just can't concentrate. I'm literally just sitting. I'm just sitting. It's just like, you're just kind of stuck. Like, because there's a whole bunch of things that you could be doing, but you can't really decide. It's like giving you anxiety just drop to try to decide on which one of these things you're going to do because all of it is stuff that you really don't feel like doing. But I mean, it's it's like being a kid times 12. Like, <laughs> I wish I could give. I really wish I could give better, um, better um, um, examples. I mean, like, I I get irritable very easy. Like, I, somebody could say something, and, and it's not even that serious. And I'd be like, man, I do not want to talk to this dumbass for the rest of the week. Like, <laughs> I don't know, y'all. Like... And and then like the physical part of it, right? So the physical part is more so like your your chest. That's how where I feel that most in my chest. My chest is like thumping hard. Like I literally have to talk myself through breathing exercises. Like I mean. <sighs> sometimes it literally can I I tell people all the time like oh my god like there's been periods of time where anxiety has crippled me and when I say cripple I literally mean crippled to the point where I can't move like there's not I can't I can't um there's no there's no getting out of the bed it's just not happening like if I'm in the bed, if I wake up like like um about a few days ago, how I woke up and I couldn't I just couldn't move. It's like I was laying there, I could breathe, I was able to like pick my phone up and look at it like to see what time it was and but I literally could not move. And 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 have no I well I ain't gonna say I, I have no idea why I'm not gonna say that and I ain't gonna put that lie out there because it there has have, have been some things going on with me but um but, uh, so I'm pretty sure those things are are contributing to this state that I am still going through but yeah literally could not move I think I was tweeting about it literally could not move I typically and y'all know okay all right all right y'all know that um I partake in the reefer activities um and I, but I'm not a I know it, it might seem like I'm this like super smoker but I'm not like I, re, I mean yes I might smoke daily but it's a very little amount like I tell real smokers how much I smoke daily or every other day, and they be like, "Man, you ain't no smoker," and I'll be like, "All right, whatever." But uh, um, so it's it's very minimal, um, and and I I I kind of keep to just a minimal amount every day uh, after I'm done working, um, you know, to to keep myself relaxed because I, I've said before on previous episodes. I have not been on any actual medications for depression or anxiety in like close to four years. So, and that's since I started um, with cannabis use. So, um, 
the 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 one thing about anxiety and when it when it really really hits or it 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 catches you off guard or you or it's just like you kind of knew it was coming but it's just so overpowering until you can't there's no turning back you have to just kind of go through it like the weed helps but it it's literally like to keep it from getting any worse it's not going to completely make it go away for me um when when it's that intense you know what I'm saying like it and I'm talking like just extreme level of like there's there's some like something major going on in, in my life and I have this this very thick anxiety that's just not gonna move but the, the weed is not going to fix it but it'll it'll not make it be any worse <laughs> you know what I'm saying like it'll make me feel good for a minute and mellow me out for a minute but I know that it's still there so I just have to kind of ride the wave and so um and and I don't know if there you know would be a specific strain or anything like that that could help with something like that I'm pretty sure like in you know the legal states that have dispensaries and things like that um they probably have a lot of have done a lot of research on that and and could uh could could probably could help me um so Georgia if you get on your shit I'd appreciate it but um but yeah it's like (laughs) it's you're you're at that point so there's it's like there's no turning back and you just have to kind of ride the wave and ride the situation out and and people often ask me you know how do I do that and it's literally just I I don't even want to say day by day it's literally like hour by hour type of thing telling myself that this is no, this is no worse than it's ever been before. You know, I, because again, a part, a part of anxiety is taking something that seems, uh, taking something that is pretty small and making it seem like it's a hundred times bigger than what it is. So I I minimalize, like I like to try to minimalize or minimalize, minimize um, the part that anxiety plays in my life. Right. I like I I'm not going to give anxiety these big props and say, oh, anxiety is a huge part of my life. I'm not I don't want to claim that. So I make it as minimal as possible. And um, I just like to say to myself that this time is not hard. This time is not hard, the hardest that it's ever been. Like I've gone through worst feelings of anxiety and I'll get through this. So what, so, so Autumn, what do you need to do? Like, do you need a mental health day from work? Um, do you need, I mean, if, if it, for real, if it all comes down to it, it's like, even though I've, I, and I, I do not condone this at all. And I I promise, guys, I have gotten away from this big time and it hasn't happened in a very long time. But I was going to say, you know, hey, if you have to go and eat, (laughs) you know, if it's that bad and I'm not going to lie, if it gets to a point where it's that damn bad, I'm going to go get something to eat. Like I just and, and, and that's how you know that it's it's bad. You know what I'm saying? But. Those, but, but, and that's what I used to do to cope. Like I said, I try not to go that route now. Um, You know, I even go to the point where if I can get outside and run and, and, you know, you've never, the people who know me have never, have, have always heard me say that working out doesn't do anything for me and my anxiety. And as a matter of fact, it makes it worse. Well, it does make it worse in in the beginning because I'm all, I'm already halfway anxious about going to work out anyway. Like I could be anxious about going out to run a mile. Y'all know I can run and like a mile. That's nothing. That's, you know, I could do that in my sleep. So why am I anxious about it? Right. So, 
<laughs> but um but yeah so it makes it worse at first but once I'm there and getting into it it doesn't so you know I don't know maybe um that's a, a suggestion if you do suffer from anxiety um or just do something you love to do like I I um I try to write or I'll listen to music, which depending on what the situation is, the music may make it better or worse, you know, or, you know, maybe I, I'm in the mood for gospel music. I had to get a sip of water. Um, gospel music, um, you know, maybe I want to get my praise on, maybe I want to cry, like whatever mood I'm in. It's literally, or, you know, I'll listen to a podcast. I'll listen to a funny podcast or um, something like that. Uh, The one thing that I do not do, um, which I told myself I was going to get better at, but I just can't, I still can't bring myself to do this, is to, like, reach out directly to friends. Like if somebody texts me that day and, you know, we just we talking and they ask me how I am, then I I might say something. But I don't ever hit my closest friends up and be like, you know, why? Why do I feel like this? You know what I'm saying? Like be and, and and I don't know. And maybe it is because I like to be the strong friend and I know that. My friend, you know, if my friends are going through something, I don't want to put that, I don't want to put my burdens on them. So, um, I, I, I probably, you know, and I have really good friends. Like, I have a, a hell of a club, you know what I'm saying? Like, from sorority sisters to just just you know people I've met and that run in different circles and um a real decent group of people that I can reach out to but I just don't and I don't know if that's the Aries in me I I don't know if it's the you know I'll survive by myself or if it is just solely me not wanting to put my burdens on someone else then I don't know it's it could be a combination. I don't know. But I can admit that um, I don't do that. But I do try to practice um, positive, you know, doing positive things. Um, like, again, like I said, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll try to write or I'll go to the spa, you know. Um, th- that's when I think that self-care is is important very important like if you feel like you're losing yourself or if you feel like you're losing to the anxiety um like I said I I I took I just took tomorrow off I was already off Friday I took tomorrow off and I was like you know what I ain't got nothing on my schedule I'm going to um go out here to this spa called Jeju it's like a Korean bathhouse and I'm going to sit there for a few hours and the jacuzzis and the saunas um the wet sauna the dry sauna like that's what I'm gonna do and just be there by myself and I'm pretty sure it won't be like too crowded or anything so it'll be you know nice and quiet and calm and that's just uh, I don't know what it is that's going on with me right now but it is definitely something and um I'm gonna beat it like I always do so, but anyway, yeah, I'm taking self care self care day or mental health day, kind of what we call it at work, um, and hopefully be feeling better, man. Like psh, y'all know, I don't be like ever not lit. Like this is whack. <laughs> this is one hundred percent whack. But I just thought, um that I would come on the podcast and since I needed a solo episode and I was already kind of dealing with uh the whole anxiety thing for the last couple of weeks I was like yeah I might as well get on here and talk about it um I've heard several uh podcasters uh talk about their their battles with it and um I don't know just felt like being transparent this evening and uh 
giving y'all a, a, a taste of what Autumn be going through. So at any rate, uh, where I will not be anxious at is Smoke Free Weekend, um, April 16th through the 20th in Vegas. Um, it is not a podcast event, but it is put on by podcasters and there will be a live show with several uh, different podcasters um, or several different shows and some entertainment, um, the dope um, photography, some DJs, some pool party, toga party. Um, I don't know. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. It'll be my first time in Vegas, and this is my birthday celebration for this year, so prepare to uh turn up and i hope i see y'all there and the uh link for smoke free weekend will be in the show notes i can't think of anything else right at this moment um i think i've given y'all a good like 30 minutes or whatever but uh again i just want to uh thank you for listening to the lit life podcast and uh be sure to follow me on Twitter, on Instagram, on YouTube, at Autumn the Aries, and on Facebook at Lit Life Podcast. And uh, you can listen to me however you're listening to me now. And if you don't want to listen to me like this now, you can try one of the other services. I am on iHeartRadio, uh, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Spotify. Uh, uh, Stitcher, Radio One, or Republic, uh, whatever it is. Um, I'm on all of those. So I'm not on Pandora. Pandora um, basically said, we not, nah. They was like, nah. So <sighs> that's another story for another day. But anyways, thank you for listening to the Lit Life Podcast, where I encourage you to live your life autonomously. autonomously. Until you hear me again, peace. <laughs>